Elizabeth. Yeah, just um, following on a bit from what Bonnie's saying, I was just wondering, um, as things develop, do you see a possibility of the serialization and folding, unfolding, actually continuing after the building or the object is actually in place? Yes, although I have to say it was using animation software, the most exciting thing to an architect is thinking of a moving building, but the toughest thing is getting a building to move, even the components. Like a, you know, I tell my students all the time if they want to make a contribution to architecture, they should figure out how to put a doubly curved door on a doubly curved surface. It has never been done. You know, it's barely even been done in a car or an airplane. So getting complex shapes to move in complex ways is the absolute, you know, apex of the problem. Um, you know, thinking big collections of objects in a complex way is a simpler problem. But so, yes, that's definitely the terminal point for today, is how do you get a building to physically move? But the nice thing about calculus is by varying the components, you get peop you can move people. You know, visually your eye moves. Like in the church, because of the variation of those shapes, you know, I don't care who you are, you always follow right to the altar because the shapes just have that rhythm and they scale in that way that they just move you in that direction. And it's a different kind of rhythm and motion. So, I mean, I've had a lot of people say, like, where am I supposed to stand? I mean, it's a question you get all the time when they say, oh, the architect's here. What to ask them about his building. And every, the first question that everybody says is, we've been having this argument. Am I supposed to stand here or am I supposed to stand there? And I always say, well, no, actually, you're supposed to move. You know, you're supposed to see it in motion. Just because that's the principle of the forms, is that they're motion-based. So getting him to literally move is, you know, much harder in architecture than any other field because it's just so big and heavy. Okay, so I mean, um, I, I really like <coughs> what you about how the individual form into a greater whole, which is the, the system that holds it all together. I'm just wondering, how do you see your own buildings as a part of the whole of the city itself? What is your relationship? Question from Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not as fabric and not as freestanding buildings. I mean, the model of fabric is that the building is just the continuation of the city, and the freestanding building is the icon. I mean, to me, I would like to see them like a separatrix, you know, as clearly defined elements, but connected to their context. Um, through whatever means, you know, whether it's color and surface texture or whether it's actual building mass and alignment or materials or whatever it might be, I'd want them to be both connected and discrete at the same time. So in that respect, when you do design your, your building, you do take the whole place into consideration as in the city and how the whole city looks? Yeah. <coughs> Good luck in Los Angeles, because I heard there is no city. I've never been there, but <laughs> it's lots of little neighborhoods. <laughs> Was it? Heather? Last one? I really appreciate it. It's been colonized by bad design already. No, it's it's enemies. 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 No, the, the flatware is my response to the two. <laughs> <laughs> have you created any pieces of flatware in that system that don't function as anything? Uh, no. No, but the, I mean, what's, what's nice about them, right now we have a few of the prototypes done. And Alessi doesn't, you know, they don't test market. I mean, it's one of the nice things about them. They just, you know, they really are very willing to fail. They actually like to fail um, with certain things. 
only because they see it as a risk. Um, but there are some of them that even though they do function, people can't figure out how they function. So, I mean, like, one of my favorites is this cheese knife, which is a kind of weird knife with a prong that comes out of it. And it's just not clear that you're supposed to cut it and just stick it to it. <laughs> Although we've had other ones right next to it that make sense. So, the, you know, I, I, I'm concerned that everybody seems to like things, because I actually, my mode is more, you know, shock someone out of a sense of just acceptance and distraction, because I'm in a field where everybody just walks through architecture without even noticing it. So I actually do believe in the project of critical architecture where you need to actually disrupt someone's lifestyle enough that they break out of their habits and pay attention to their environment. But then I don't like to torture people. So it's a fine line. I mean, with the flatware, I want it to look alien enough that people think about it, but then I want it to work. Okay, that's a good last statement. Flow and break. Both. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.